Hi, good morning, guys. Before we actually get started, I just wanted to take a moment to, on behalf of the five of us, to express our gratitude and our appreciation towards Pastor Jason. He has spent the last six weeks, um, several hours working with us, teaching us, mentoring, challenging us, pushing us out of our comfort zone, all the while protecting thoughts that are uniquely ours. And he is a very busy man. And so to carve out time to invest in us, and that, that was, it's just a blessing. And so we are, from the bottom of our hearts, we are, Thank you for this opportunity, and we are so grateful that we have a, a, a lead pastor like you whose heart is to build up members of this community. Yeah. <laughs> so good morning, guys. My name is Rebecca, if you didn't catch that before. I am City Collective's prayer team lead, and if there's two things you need to know about me, uh, one, I am, or will be, the annoying optimistic in your life. The second thing is, is that if I had one message to speak on for the rest of my life, it would be on hope, which is why this passage of scripture really, really made my spirit sing. I love that I have been deemed righteous by my faith in Jesus and that I can boast in the hope of the glory of God. I can even get on board with Paul when he says that we can um, rejoice in our suffering because in suffering we build perseverance, character, and hope. Is it difficult? Absolutely. But I trust you, Paul. You sold me. I'm still on board. And then something funny happened. I was once told that after being married a length of time, uh, Blessin, my husband, and I would eventually morph into one entity with similar mannerisms. Now, I don't know if that's happened yet, but after I read verse 4, I heard Blessin's voice in my head go, Really, Paul? Is it really that simple? How convenient of you to leave out how we're supposed to persevere. Between the two of us, he's the um, realist. <laughs> and after years of marriage, my um, optimism has taken on an edge of realism in the form of Blessing's voice in my head. And so Blessing's voice in my head made me really stop and ponder this part of the passage. How do we persevere in suffering? What does that look like? Because Paul talks about it like as of curling up into a ball and letting life pass isn't an option. And so as a church in August, we were talking about this wilderness series, and it was really apt because Blessing and I have been walking uh, a desert area in one, marriage, in one area of our marriage um, pretty much since last fall, so almost now a year. And the thing is, I am very familiar with desert spaces. I grew up in the Middle East. And so if there's two things you need to know about surviving the desert, among many, is that one, sandstorms hit hard and unexpectedly. One minute, it's a sunny day, life is good. And the next minute, wind is whipping sand at your skin and your eyes. And if sand blindness isn't enough, sandstorms cut out sunlight. It goes dark. And so if you're caught outside in a sandstorm, your only option is to start moving. You, and you hope and pray uh, that you bump into shelter and not a moving vehicle. Second thing, beware of mirages. On a hot, thirsty day, your brain will imagine a shimmering pool of water off into the distance. And when you get closer, you only find more sand. Your brain tricked you into seeing what you wanted to see. And then you doubt when you actually see an oasis. So when I was pondering this question about how do we persevere, I felt God invite me to look back on this last year of our desert journey. And the first thing I saw was the sandstorms that hit hard and unexpectedly. There were literal moments in the year where we were left going, what just happened? But before I could start to wallow in self-pity, I felt God nudge my spirit a little more. And so I looked a little closer and I saw shimmering pools dotting my desert journey. Now you might be asking, were they mirages? Was the optimist in me so desperate that I was looking for good amongst the chaos? And I can confidently tell you that they were not mirages. They were intimate moments spent in the presence of Jesus. Around those pools of living waters, God worked on my character just as Paul promised. 
In the oases, I was convicted of sin and freed. My spirit was refreshed and my faith was strengthened. In the oases, my spirit grew lush and green and started to take root. But I could not stay at the oases forever, and I was eventually led out back into the desert where I had to learn the difference between saying I had faith and living a life of faith. I had to learn how to persevere, except now when sandstorms hit, I pull the promises of God that I hid in my heart back in the oases, and I pray them. Not to nag at God, because I've been convicted of that before, but to reaffirm my own hope and my own faith. I am fiercely protective of my hope in the glory of God, because if the enemy can kill my hope, he kills my faith. Promises like Joshua 1.9. For I know the plans I have, or Joshua 1, 9. Have I not commanded you? Be bold and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Isaiah 40, 31. For those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like the eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not grow faint. Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Did you hear that? He's declaring it over your life. He has plans to give you, uh, to prosper you and not harm you, to give you a hope and a future. We live in a sin-sick world. Human suffering is inevitable. Desert journeys are inevitable. But we know one way that perseverance can look like. We as a church can go into the desert hesitant, sure, but hopeful, for the Lord our God is with us wherever we go. The God who created the desert not only promises you strength to persevere, he promises you a hope and a future on the other side. And when you are on the other side and you look back, and I hope you look back, you will see oases of God's goodness and faithfulness dotting your desert journeys. They are definitely not mirages. Thank you.